Welcome back to Rapid Lodash. In our first video, we'll be covering the basics of constructing objects and working with their data. We've seen how we can use some of Lodash's functions to work with primitive arrays. However, if we want to represent more complex data, we'll need to use JavaScript objects. In our first section, we talked about what Lodash is and set up our development environment to use it in Node.js or on the web. Finally, we use Lodash to work with arrays. In this section, we'll work with JavaScript objects. We'll learn what JavaScript objects and prototypes are. We'll see how to deal with data types in a dynamically typed language like JavaScript. We'll see how objects are constructed with keys and values, and how we can use Lodash to navigate them. Finally, we'll use Lodash to copy and clone objects and remove duplication from our code. To get started, we'll open our node REPL environment with the node command. We'll also need to load Lodash with the require command. In our previous examples, we've just viewed a dinosaur in our park as a simple string. Let's create our dinosaur as an object to open up more possibilities. At this point, we have a fully functional JavaScript object. Let's take a quick detour and talk about objects, classes, and prototypes. An object, as we've seen, is a specific instance within our application. In many programming languages, we have the concept of a class. A class is a blueprint for an object, and a class can be used to create any number of objects. JavaScript does not use this traditional concept of a class. Instead, JavaScript uses prototypes. A prototype is a single object that other objects can reuse properties and methods from. This is all basic JavaScript. You can take advantage of objects and prototypes without ever loading Lodash. However, Lodash can help us manage our object construction more effectively. We can do this in one line using Lodash's create function. We just pass in a prototype and a list of properties to override. In our previous example, we've overridden properties by providing colon separated pairs. We call the text on the left side of the colon a key. The item on the right side of the colon is a value. It is common to want to get some metadata from an object. For example, we may want to know what properties an object has. We can use Lodash's keys function to get a list of keys. Similarly, we can use the values function to get the data on the right side of the colon. Using keys or values, we get an array which we can iterate over. This is useful for validating or manipulating the object. Now, let's take it a step further and get a list of the keys and values, but matched into an array of pairs that we can iterate over. Try using the pairs function on our object. Once again, it takes an object as the only argument and gives you back an array. However, this time, it will be a two-dimensional array of the key value pairs. We can also do safety checks on an object confirming that a key exists within the object. We'll use the has function, pass it an object, and a key. Now that we can navigate our objects easily, we'll try a more advanced case, navigating and changing the object in one operation. We'll use the map values function to produce an object with the same keys as the source, but modified values. Let's clean up our dinosaur data by changing all the values to uppercase text. This function takes an object and a function to apply to each value. Notice that we are only applying our transformation to string values. We'll learn more about this in our next video. Excellent. We've learned how to construct a JavaScript object with Lodash and use the keys and values functions to explore the data in the object. We've used Lodash functions to change objects into arrays and to invert an object's data. Finally, we've used Lodash to transform data within an object. In our next video, we will use Lodash to help use our data types safely in our JavaScript applications.